How's it going, ladies and gentlemen? Mr. Donahue here once again. This time we're going to take a look at the sizes of atoms and ions. So our objectives are to describe the patterns that emerge as a result of the organization of the periodic table and the underlying reason for those patterns, specifically the sizes of atoms. Then we want to use these patterns to predict the properties of related elements. So let's get into it. So atomic radii, what does that even mean? Well, simply put, the atomic radius is a measure of how big an atom is from the center to the edge. So the radius, you know, think of this as a circle. It's going from the center to the edge. Now, edges of an atom are a bit fuzzy because of the whole quantum thing going on. It's where are these electrons? They're not orbiting like a planet. They're more like, a, you know, electron clouds. Still, these electron clouds cannot penetrate each other to any great extent. So we're going to talk about different kinds of atomic radii. We got the non-bonding radius. So when we talk about that, it's sometimes also referred to as the van der Waals radii, and it's larger than the bonding radius, which is the alternative. Basically, it's, hey, if we push these atoms together, how close can we get them? And then that distance between the nuclei is the atomic radius. Then there's also the bonding radius, sometimes called the covalent radii, and it's smaller than the non-bonding, because what happens is they're sharing some space and electrons, so those nuclei end up closer. So again, we go, hey, what's the midpoint? And that's gonna be slightly smaller. That's gonna give you the bonding radii. So trends in atomic radii. As we go down a group on the periodic table, the atomic radii increases. The reason for that is there's additional energy levels. It's like adding layers to an onion. The more layers you got, the bigger it gets. So if we take a look at hydrogen and its electron configuration, it's only got the one energy level. So that you get something that's that big. You move down, you got lithium. There's a second energy level there. It's even bigger. You move down again, you get sodium. There's three energy levels. It's going to be bigger than lithium and hydrogen. So as you go left to right across a period, the atomic radii decreases. And this can seem kind of counterintuitive because as we move left to right, we have more mass. We got more electrons. How are these atoms getting smaller? And the answer is the greater effective nuclear charge. So if we take a look at all of these examples, uh, sodium has an effective nuclear charge of plus one. All right. Whereas if I move down to chlorine, its effective nuclear charge is plus seven. So the electrons on the outer shell for chlorine are feeling a plus seven pull, whereas sodium, same number of energy levels, only feeling a plus one. Well, which one's going to pull those electrons in tighter? It's going to be chlorine. So that's why as you go left to right, the radii decreases. Even though it becomes more massive, the size of it gets smaller. It's like more dense, right? Um, so yeah. So yeah, if we take a look at sodium and sulfur, for example, Sodium has a mass of 22.99 and a radius of 190 picometers, whereas sulfur, same period, is heavier but smaller, right? So again, sodium, this electron's feeling a plus one pull, whereas all of these are feeling a plus six pull. So you can see sulfur is going to be a lot smaller than sodium. All right, sizes of ions. So let's let's think about different kinds of ions. We've got cations, right? So when you lose electrons, you get smaller. And I hope that kind of makes sense intuitively. If you lose something, there's less of it there. Right? If you lost some weight, you become smaller. If you lose electrons, you become smaller. Also, if you lose electrons, you become a positive cation. So you can just simply say cations are smaller than their atoms. So if I have sodium here, 2-8-1 as its uh, electron configuration, when it becomes sodium plus 1, how to do that? Well, it lost that one electron. So now it's just got two energy levels and it's smaller. Now the opposite, we can gain electrons and it gets bigger. I hope that kind of makes sense to you intuitively. So when we gain electrons, we become a negatively charged anion. So you can just say anions are larger than their atoms. There's you know more electrons and there's also more repulsion. So those electrons are kind of pushing away from each other more. So chlorine has an electron configuration 2-8-7. You add one electron to it make it a negatively charged anion, and now you got 2-8-8. Hopefully, you can understand why this one is bigger than the chlorine atom. Isoelectronic series. Sometimes it's helpful if we want to talk about how uh, the nucleus is affecting the size of an atom to take a look at, you know, atoms that have the same number of electrons, or they're isoelectronic. They have the same number of electrons. 
So elect isoelectronic series are ions that possess the same number of electrons. So you can see oxygen here, when it becomes an ion, it was 2-6, well it gained two electrons, and now it's 2-8. Now all of these ions have the same electron configuration of 2-8. So now the question is, well which one's going to be the biggest? Or which one's going to be the smallest? So you can see the effect the nuclear charge has on the size of the atoms by, or ions by looking at these isoelectronic series. So oxygen has eight protons, fluorine has nine, sodium 11, magnesium 12, aluminum 13. So if we take a look, all of these are 2-8. So, well, what's the effective nuclear charge going to be for this second energy level? For oxygen, it's going to be plus six. For fluorine, it's going to be plus seven. For sodium, it's going to be um, plus nine. Magnesium plus 10 and aluminum plus 11. So which one's going to be smaller? The one with the greatest effective nuclear charge. And you can see as the, we look at the radii, they get smaller and smaller as the effective nuclear charge goes up. So as the nuclear charge increases, the radius decreases. So which one would be bigger, Li or Be? And if I'm taking a look at my periodic table, we have Li next to Be in the same period. So which one's going to be bigger? Lithium. The one that has a lower effective nuclear charge. What about lithium versus sodium? Well, on the periodic table, they're above and below each other. And I know that as we move down a group, we add another layer onto that atom. So the one that's going to be larger is going to be sodium. It's got more energy levels. All right, what about oxygen or oxygen ion with the minus two oxide? Well, how do you get the minus two? It gained two electrons. So which one's bigger? The oxide ion. Boom. What about Al or Al plus three? Well, how did it become plus three? It lost three electrons. So the one that's going to be bigger is the thing that didn't lose anything. So the aluminum's going to be the one that's bigger. All right, so summarize. Hopefully you can do this. Describe the patterns for atomic and ionic radii that emerge as a result of the organization of the periodic table and the underlying reasons for those patterns. And then you hopefully you can use these patterns to predict the properties of related elements. Going back to this, comparing which one should be bigger, hopefully you can look at the periodic table and be able to tell. All right, so I hope you found that helpful. See you in class. Goodbye.